Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing a list of four major things that magic simply cannot do. As any witch or wizard will tell you, especially the ones who are muggle-born, magic can do a lot of things. It can make tidying up your home or flat a rather quick and easy task. It can literally knock the wand out of another person's hand or make things levitate off the ground. It can create fire from thin air, make people look like other people, or appear invisible. It can even cause instant death. In fact, the list of what magic can do often seems rather endless. But there are actually a many number of things that magic cannot do, of which we'll be covering four in today's video. 1. Magic cannot make someone love you While it's true that there is a love potion in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, this particular magical brew cannot actually make another person love you. The potion in question is called Amortentia, an incredibly powerful and dangerous bit of magic that causes extreme infatuation or obsession to anyone who drinks it. It's known to smell differently to each person based on their interests and preferences, and has a telltale mother of pearl sheen. And while Amortentia is the closest thing the wizarding world has to an actual love potion, it does not cause the drinker to experience true love. 2. Magic cannot make you immortal Probably the most noteworthy of all the things magic cannot do is prevent you from getting older and dying. While having magical abilities does seem to extend the lives of the majority of witches and wizards, Albus Dumbledore for example was around 115 when he died and when he was still rather nimble, it does not appear to make people any less susceptible to death. That is to say, there is no known spell that can prevent one from dying, nor can it bring someone back from the dead. Notable exceptions to this rule include rarities like the Philosopher's Stone, Horcruxes, and the Resurrection Stone. However, even these forms of magic come with substantial limitations, and in my opinion, do not entirely count as magic that can grant true immortality. In terms of the Philosopher's Stone, for instance, there has only ever been one known to exist throughout all of history. This particular magical artifact was created by famed alchemist Nicolas Flamel, and destroyed in 1992. Before then, by drinking the Elixir of Life, which was produced by the stone, both Flamel and his wife, Perenelle, lived to be more than 650. The pair would drink the Elixir to maintain the effects of immortality, meaning that it needed to be regularly consumed in order to continue to keep them alive. However, it's important to note that other wizards, who did not ingest the Elixir of Life, were also able to live incredibly long, such as Barry Winkle, who lived to be 755, and Armando Dippet, who lived to be 355. So, there's always the question of whether the Flamels may have lived to be that old without the stone and its elixir. That said, Nicolas and Perenelle Flamel did die soon after they decided it would be wise to destroy the stone a decision they made in order to prevent the likes of Lord Voldemort from stealing it and using it for dark purposes. Horcruxes, on the other hand, operate quite differently from the Philosopher's Stone. While it's true that a soul cannot technically die if it has been split from its human form and stored within another being or object, which is effectively what a Horcrux is, there are some major caveats that come with this practice. For one, the soul that is housed elsewhere, i.e. in the Horcrux, can only survive as long as its host does. This explains why Voldemort became susceptible to death when all of his horcruxes were destroyed, Nagini and Harry included. And while a witch or wizard who has made a horcrux can come back in a new bodily form so long as they have an intact horcrux somewhere in existence, the piece of soul in the horcrux is not so much living as it is just existing. For example, Voldemort's horcrux that he made from his adolescent diary takes on the thoughts and memories of the Dark Lord as he was when he created the Horcrux, that is, as a student who is not yet Voldemort, but a young wizard named Tom Riddle. This means that while Voldemort roamed around Albania as a shadowy version of himself, the piece of his soul that existed in the diary never evolved or grew as the true Voldemort did in his bodily form. Then there is the Resurrection Stone, one of the three famed Deathly Hallows. As you likely know, or could have probably guessed, the Resurrection Stone has the ability to resurrect people from the dead, and while this incredibly rare magical artifact can bring people back to life, it does so with some incredible limitations. For example, the first wizard who attempted to bring someone back to life using the Resurrection Stone 
is presumed to be the first ever wizard to possess it, Cadmus Peveril. As the legend goes, Cadmus used the stone to revive his deceased fiance, or so he thought. In actual fact, the version of his former lover who he brought back to the world of the living was still separated from him by the veil of death, and she appeared incredibly sad and cold to the touch, making it clear to Cadmus that she was not really alive again at all. The other example we can point to is when Harry uses the stone to summon his deceased loved ones right before he confronts Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest. Here, Harry is able to briefly speak to his parents, Sirius Black and Remus Lupin, all of whom are dead. That said, these apparitions are unable to stay very long and do not take on solid bodily forms, once again suggesting that the Resurrection Stone does not truly have the ability to bring someone back from the dead. 3. Magic cannot fix your eyesight One of the most peculiar things that magic cannot do is fix a person's eyesight. This, of course, is proven by the fact that many witches and wizards in the wizarding world need eyeglasses. And while the case could be made that many of these people are simply getting older, and as we've just gone over, magic cannot prevent aging and death, this still would not explain why a young boy like Harry would need glasses. In fact, all we see magic do for Harry in terms of his eyesight is fix his glasses so that they no longer require sellotape to hold them together. I mean, even us muggles have laser eye surgery. 4. Magic cannot give you wealth Another almost unbelievable thing that magic cannot do is make you rich. While there are a many number of wealthy wizarding families that Harry comes to know, such as the Malfoys, it becomes apparent through the Weasley family and their lack of gold that not all magical families are well off. But as the majority of witches and wizards are able to conjure things out of thin air, such as fire, water, and even animals like birds and snakes, it seems incredibly odd that they are unable to create things that could be used to improve their overall quality of life, such as food, or if you want to get right to it, gold. Well, evidently, as taught in conjuration classes at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, conjuring items is an extremely complex form of magic and follows what is known as Gamp's Law of Elemental Transfiguration. In fact, Gamp's Law outlines five various exceptions to the rule of what can and cannot be transfigured or conjured. Throughout the Harry Potter series, we only ever learn of one of these exceptions for certain, and that is that one cannot conjure good food. That is to say that good food cannot be created by magic out of nothing. It's important to note, however, that even though good food cannot be made out of thin air, there are workarounds to this particular law. Food can be multiplied if you already have some. It can also be summoned if you know approximately where it is and it can be enlarged to make more of what you already have. Presumably, this magical law extends to other items that could be used to create more wealth, most notably gold. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? What else can magic not do? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.